So hello everyone, today I'm in the Cheshire town of Nantwich. Looking at a period of English history, I usually find quite boring. So why have I come here on a cold afternoon in January? Well, actually Nantwich was one of the most important parts of the English Civil War. One of the most important arenas of the English Civil War. And today promises to be full of laughter, smiles, music, Morris dancing, musket fire and cannon fire. And all that just might change my mind about the whole thing. So welcome to Nantwich, a place that on the surface looks like any other little English town with a great amount of charm. And on your average day throughout the year, it's pretty streets, fine shops, handsome indoor market, and one of the country's highest concentrations of listed buildings would make any visit here a rewarding one. But this is the last Saturday in January 2024, and this is no average day. Today is not actually January 2024 in Nantwich at all, it's January 1644 and I've gone back in time. <laughs> Hi, so this is Alex and he's a royalist, um, a musketeer as well, so um, what is this event today and, and why is it important, why is it um, commemorated? Yeah, we're reenacting the Battle of Nantwich. The Battle of Nantwich took place in 1644. It actually happened on the 25th of January, and that's why we reenact it as close as we can to the actual date of the battle. And Nantwich town itself was held by the parliamentarians, and the royalists had been sieging it. And then the parliamentarian relief force came across the fields. There was a huge battle in the fields just outside of Nantwich, um, and it was the parliamentarians won. And it was a massive battle that was the first time the Royalists had been beaten in a field battle. So it's worth cre recreating that event in history. But, um, yeah, so so the first time in, in the Civil War? In the Civil Wars, yeah. The first time the Royalists had actually lost a field battle. Wow. wow. Um, and then all the residents of, uh, of Nantwich, they wore holly sprigs in their hats. Right. And that's how we end up with the phrase holly holy day. That's why it's called that. Oh, so, amazing. yeah, so sometimes you'll see people in the town just wearing sprigs of holly in their hats. Yeah. Um, hi, my name is Joe. Joe Lowry, uh, my role is the chair of the Holly Holy Day Society, and so that's the organisation that puts on the Battle of Nantwich. Uh, it was quite an important battle in the Civil War. Uh, it was in January 1644, um, and uh, it was the only or the remaining parliamentarian town in Nantwich, and the Royalists wanted it. My name is Dev Hobson, and I'm the official town cry of now. The official town cry. The official now. appointed town cry, yes. It's important to remember that the Battle of Nantwich was the turning point for Cheshire in the Civil War. That's why, that's why it's very important for Nantwich, because the whole of um, Cheshire was Royalists, and, yeah. and this was the very last... It was a holdout of parliamentarians. Yeah, of parliamentarians. And we, and, and we won. So what can I expect from being here today? What, what am I going to see? What, what's, the, what's it going to feel like, the atmosphere? Uh, really fun atmosphere, really um, friendly atmosphere. Lots of people from the Sealed Knot Society, so they are the society that reenacts the Civil War um, in many places around the country. But they all come here, or a lot of them. We've got between two and 300 people in the seal not all here all in their kit from that era yeah so we've got displays in the town square today of the muskets we've got displays from the pikemen uh, there's a drum display about to go on now and they're waving the colors uh, and then they will all march into town and they will get troop inspection because they were an army and they want to behave yeah. like they were um, when it comes to the muskets in particular like how many musketeers would have been in the in the parliamentarian in the sorry the royalist army uh, there was probably about a thousand musketeers on the day um, and probably about the same amount of pikemen and about 500 riding horses as well. Um, so, you know, quite a big army. There's not, the fields out there aren't that big, and the numbers in Parliament were about the same. Yeah. But the people that actually swung the battle were the residents in Answich, because when the battle was kind of like on edge, 
There was a load of musketeers that were in Nantwich and they all marched up the, uh, the road, broke out of the barricades into the rear of the Royalist Army and that turned the battle. Was, uh, right, OK. Nantwich is pretty critical, yeah. Yeah, pretty yeah. crucial. <laughs> right, so as you can see, I've been given a high viz by the event organisers to say that I'm part of the press, which is very exciting. <laughs> The demonstrations in the morning doubled with some world-class Morris dancing had whet my appetite, but I hadn't really noticed the number of people in attendance until making my way to the bridge to watch the troops march into town. Thousands of people crowded the route to watch both the Royalist and Parliamentarian armies march into the town, accompanied by the sound of flutes and drums. Now I don't know what I'd expected to see today, but well-disciplined armies marching in lockstep and thousands of eager onlookers came as a very pleasant surprise. The spectacle of it all was wonderful, but there was a sense of seriousness and an air of respect in both armies, mixed with an electric anticipation and fun from those in the crowd. It was starting to feel genuinely exciting to be there. If there was ever a way to bring history to life for people who would otherwise not bother with it, this was surely it. Um, so, how long has this actually been commemorated? Uh, over 50 years. <laughs> over 50 years? Correct, oh, okay. over 50 years. So, you know, it's just over 50 years now. So and how, how long have you been doing it? I've been doing it 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. Have you always been a royalist? Uh, always been a royalist, yeah. I start, I asked when I joined the Sealed Knots, which is the society that provides all, you know, all of us reenactors are members of the Sealed Knots. Yeah. Uh, when I was asked, um, I said I would like to be a parliamentarian musketeer. And so they started me as a royalist pikeman, and then I've just turned into a musketeer over time, but always stuck with the royalist army, because oh. I suppose in theory I wouldn't have known any different if I'd have been a 17th century <laughs> peasant. Yeah, yeah, you're still what you're told. Do as I'm told, I wouldn't know who I was fighting for anyway. Exactly. Have you won any yet? <laughs> Never. <laughs> This year, maybe. Yeah, we always say that, but, um, <laughs> but realistically, yeah, 50 years and we're still trying, but yeah. Yeah, the parliamentarians always seem to have the edge. So if somebody like me who doesn't know much about the Civil War and usually doesn't really find it that interesting, will this sell it to me today? Will this be the event that changes everything? I really hope it would, um, because, like I say, we have um, lots of people from the Sealed Knot who know all about it, who will talk to anyone who wants to know. Uh, you can have a go at holding a musket, for instance, see how heavy it is. Amazing. Um, see why they wear what they wear. Um, and you can go into all these different buildings. And after they've battled, they will be in the different pubs that were here at the time. <laughs> right, I will definitely head to some of the pubs then afterwards, definitely. So far, I'd been having a great day out just watching the demonstrations, hearing about the history of the Civil War and the town itself. And of course, watching the troops march into the town square in all pomp and ceremony. But as the day went on, there was one thing that began to dominate everybody's thoughts, and the streets were brimming with excitement as two o'clock came. There'll be a commemorative shot, we'll lay some wreaths, and then we'll go over to a small field, uh, quite close, and then we'll have a battle. That sounds good, yeah. sounds exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to start the year. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good way to start the year, isn't it? Um, then there'll be uh, wreath laying and an inspection of the troops yeah. with the mayor. And when all that is done, then the guys go over to Mill Island and they battle it out. And they fight it out. They fight it out. And we don't know the result yet, do we? We don't know the result <laughs> yet. Right, so I've just come down to Mill Island just outside the town centre. And the troops are about to leave the town square now and march down to this little field. Uh, just outside the town for the battle reenactment. Anyway, the anticipation is building now with the crowd and it's all getting very exciting. There's a man on the tannoy up there explaining all about pikemen and musketeers and everything we're about to see and what we can expect to happen in the battle. But anyway, I'm going to use this high vis to its absolute maximum right now because I'm going to go over there and see how close can get to these cannons when they go off. Soon the Cavaliers and the Roundheads entered the field of battle and marched into formation facing each other. After some initial cannon fire, there was some rather impressive waving of the standards and the continued build of the beating drums. Then the musketeers next to me prepped their weapons. 
readied carefully into formation, took sight of the enemy and unleashed their first volley. Next, the pikemen came together for some rather dangerous pushing and shoving before reforming and starting again. Soon the battlefield was a hectic mishmash of long pikes and musket smoke before everyone seemed to agree to a momentary lull to regroup and possibly re-strategize. Still a lot of explosions going up. Um, the drumming's down a bit. <laughs> um, and there's a bit of a standoff now on the battlefield. It's actually really film anything because there's so much going on and I don't actually know how to commentate on this um, as soon as I start filming and talking to you I'm not actually filming the battle it's wonderful <laughs> and there's lots of people um, just getting involved there's people across the river on the road over there there's people behind me obviously there's a gang of photographers here it's like I mean no matter what you think of this this is history come alive, this is uh, history being brought to the to people now to make it alive and make it interesting. So I think it's coming to a bit of a climax now, it's quite exciting, there's a lot going on. Uh, the drummers has picked up the pace. I'm going to have to film something. Friendly kind of violence. Everybody's smiling but they're all <laughs> fighting. So there's a lot going on in this battle, it's really hard to keep up and film at the same time and commentate at the same time. So there's a lot of pikemen pushing and shoving, there's a lot of cannon fire going off. But it's, it's, it's so exciting, the drumming has been incessant. And again, look, they're coming together now, I've come away from the battle a minute, but they're coming together again to push and shove and grunt and fight. There's a lot of shouting going on, it's wonderful. They're really getting into it, that's what I like about it, these guys who are involved. The ladies and the men involved in this are really getting into it. They're getting red in the face, they're getting angry, but there's also a friendliness about it, which uh, I suppose, you know, it's quite nice. I've never been to a battle reenactment before, and I never thought I'd be one of the people who would, and I never thought I'd be one of the people who'd say, you know what, this is good enough. I'd come to another one, but it is, it's good enough. <laughs> and I'd come to another one. You know what I think the best thing about this is? It brings so many people, there's thousands of people here observing history in action. It's one way of bringing history to life, I love it, it's fantastic. I wish every town had a battle like this they could reenact and had something as wonderful as this they could get involved in. But that's what makes this one special, that's what makes the Battle of Nantwich and Nantwich itself wonderful. So yeah. <laughs> So what does today mean, as, as the event is today? What does it mean to, to the town of Nantwich, um, to the people of Nantwich? It, it's a, it is a day to remember. It's a commemorative day. Um, but also, you know, any event, it, it brings in people from outside. It's good for business. It, it's, it's good for everybody. It's a great day. It's yeah. just a great day to enjoy. It, it not only commemorates a bit of history, but obviously, you know, town life is, uh, is usually quite quiet in the winter it's freezing cold so we get thousands of people to come into the town um, so you know it is not only reenacting a piece of history it's keeping the community interested um, I came to Nantwich last weekend just to give out some leaflets we went and sat in the pub afterwards and somebody came up to us and just bought us a drink for keeping history alive and we thought that's what Nantwich is all about you know we, yeah. we do our little bit we volunteer and it's our hobby but uh, yeah it's nice to know it's so important to local people yeah, so. yeah. it's fantastic it's fun already it's not even started properly yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, you wait. <laughs> <laughs> it brings a lot of people into the town at a quiet period. It brings a lot of people to use the shops and the facilities. Uh, it puts Nantwich on the map, to be perfectly honest. It gives us a chance to really promote this amazing town. A lot of these buildings were here in 1644 when they were battling. And there you go, the Battle of Nantwich, and it's been an absolutely fantastic day. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that, does it? 
Um, so yeah, I never thought anything would really enliven this part of history for me. I've never been that bothered about the English Civil War. Um, but it doesn't get more exciting than explosions. So yeah, thanks for joining me on this video. Check this out, nature. It's a fantastic festival. It's fantastic. One of those quirky British festivals that I'm looking forward to exploring more and more throughout the year. But if you want something to do in January next year, come down to Nantwich. What a fantastic spot of history and what a way to bring it to life.